See? Did you eat all? Mine was manhandled. By you. No, it wasn't. Hi Bold Bakers, an American classic from the South has fast become one of the most iconic cakes around the world. I am talking about, of course, a lovely red velvet cake. It is a cake that's flavoured with a little bit of cocoa, coloured red, and is served with a lovely traditional ermine frosting. I'm going to share this recipe with you today. So we're going to start out by saving together our dry ingredients. I have some flour, sugar, cocoa powder, some cinnamon, baking soda, and a little bit of salt and then just save that to remove any lumps. So I get asked, why do I save some ingredients and not others? I always save cocoa powder and powdered sugar because they have a little bit of moisture in them and they can tend to be a little bit lumpy. So I always save those two ingredients. Okay, lovely. There's our dry ingredients, set that over to the side and now we're gonna to mix together our wet ingredients. So into a separate jug, I'm going to add in my flavorless oil. Now oil in a red velvet cake makes it really moist and lovely. Use a flavorless oil like sunflower, canola, vegetable oil, something like that. If you want, you can also use a coconut oil and those flavors will actually work well in this cake. So next we're gonna add in some buttermilk. Now buttermilk is a really important ingredient because it tenderizes the cake because of the acid. If you don't have buttermilk, I do have a video of how you can make your own really easily. Next, we're gonna add in our eggs. Little splash of vanilla extract. Next, we're gonna add in our food coloring. Now, I use a gel food coloring because it's really concentrated and you get a really deep red, but you want to really use just as little amount of food coloring as you can. But just keep on adding it until you get the color that you want. Give that a little bit of a mixy mix. And then we're gonna add our wet into our dry. This is one of the reasons I love this cake. You can mix it all by hand. You don't need a stand mixer or anything like that. So I've been a chef for a long time, but just recently I discovered that mixing batters like red velvet cake, pancake batter, something that's quite delicate and you don't want to overmix, I mix it with a fork and it actually works really well because you can get to the bottom of the bowl and you don't end up over mixing it. So that's a good little trick for you. Wow, so check this out. Can you see that? The mix is actually bubbling. Now what that is, is a chemical reaction between the baking soda and the buttermilk. So what you want to do right now is get this into the tin and straight into the oven. So here I have two nine inch tins buttered and lined. You can also make this cake in three six inch tins. You'll get a lovely kind of smaller cake, but a higher cake. So what you want to do is just divvy this up between the two pans. Just eyeball it as best as you can. There we go. This is a really thin batter. So just to kind of even it out a little bit, give it a little bit of a shimmy shimmy shake. There we go. And get them into a nice hot oven. These cakes look gorgeous and you'll notice that they bake really fast, only around 30 minutes or so. Now you do want to be careful not to over bake these guys. So just bake them until it's firm underneath your finger. It is pulled a little bit away from the side there, but this is perfect. So once your cakes have cooled down, it's time to decorate them. Now let's talk about frosting. Here I have a big bowl of ermine frosting. This is a frosting that was traditionally used on red velvet cake. It is a typical frosting, but it has flour in it. So it's a little bit different. It is really nice. It pairs really well with the red velvet cake. I've got a recipe on my website. You can also use cream cheese frosting, which works amazingly. So either of these will work really well. If you're trying to go really authentic, this is your guy. So to decorate this cake, I like to keep it really easy. Place one layer of cake on your cake stand or your plate. Put a big dollop of frosting in the middle. Lay on your second layer. More frosting on top. And then move this frosting around to create your crumb coat. Now, for those of you who don't know, a crumb coat is that first initial layer that will gather any crumbs or any loose bits of your cake. So there's our crumb layer. You want to get this into the fridge, chill it for around 45 minutes to an hour, let it set, and then we're going to finish decorating on top of it. With my spatula, I just do big swirls and make sure that the whole cake is covered and all you have is this lovely finished product. So the great thing about a cake is that you don't have to wait for it. You can just dig right in. Look at that. This is a behemoth of a cake and I'm only doing it justice if I cut a huge big slice. So I love this cake, but I also know that it's Kevin's favorite. So come on in, Kev. Jam, I can't believe you haven't shared your red velvet cake recipe yet. I can't believe I got, I've gotten this far either without sharing red velvet cake. But you know what? Some things are just worth the wait. Oh man. I just love how warm this cake makes you feel, especially the combination of the frosting and the cake itself. A little bit of cinnamon in there, which isn't always traditional, but I added it in there to mm. get a little bit of warmth. Cocoa powder, 
And then with the frosting, it like compares together. It's just all delicious. Jim, this is your best ever red velvet cake. There you go. And on that note, head over to my website for the recipe and make sure you check out all of my other video recipes on YouTube because we've got tons of them. Jim, I'm going through this whole slice. Yeah, that's okay. That's what I was there for. Oh yeah. <laughs>